Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Tesla's 2022 annual shareholder meeting. By 2030, we aim to sell 20 million electric vehicles per annum. And with that, please welcome Elon Musk. Welcome. Um, well, I feel welcome. So, well, it's great to see everyone here. Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> um, so, yeah, welcome to Giga Texas. So it's like, like, what do you enjoy most in life? I really, uh, being able to work with a super talented group of people and to create great products and, and pr manufacture those products and deliver them to people and make people happy from those products, um, is, is that, that's sort of one of the best things in life. Um, so, we are aiming to achieve a 2 million vehicle run rate by the end of the year. Uh, so. <laughs> this is the best crowd, I mean. <laughs> and then also worth noting, uh, just recently, in the last uh, a few weeks, we made our 3 millionth car. So, yeah. 10 years ago, we'd made less than, than 3,000 cars. And uh, here we stand, 10 years later, having made over 3 million. Uh, so. it, it looks like one of those sort of, uh, you know, business plan presentation things <laughs> that, that doesn't actually come true, but, you know, you, you see it in the venture capital uh, business plan situation. Um, but it's actually true. That's the amazing part. Um, and, uh, yeah. The, uh, the cumulative profitability since inception. Um, and this approximately tra tracks to uh, uh, sort of mental pain, uh, actually. <laughs> this, this, is, this is a big deal, and I think uh, it's going to go up from here. <laughs> Solving autonomy is, uh, will, will really be an amplification of, of free cash flow to a degree that is, you know, you run the numbers and it's like, wow, can it really be that crazy? But it, it could be that crazy. Um, and, um, you know, this, uh, this year I swear. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, when we started out, uh, it, it was... It was dumb to, dumb to start a car company and then dumb squared to do an electric car company. Um, and we were told, you know, you're never going to make money, etc. And we didn't for a while, but now we have the highest operating margin in the whole industry. So. <laughs> EVs are, electric vehicles are taking a market share from gasoline cars. Um, also, when, when our competitors advertise for electric vehicles, every time they do that, our sales go up. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Model Y be the highest uh, selling vehicle by revenue this year, and the highest by unit volume next year. So. Yeah, we might be able to announce another factory location later this year. Okay, where, sh where should we build it? Okay, we've got a lot, got a lot of Canada's. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I'm, half I'm half Canadian, so maybe I should, you know. Uh, but uh, yeah. Um, well, I think, you know, ultimately we'll, we'll end up building, I don't know, probably at least uh, 10 or 12, uh, 10 or 12 gigafactories. Uh, and there will, there will be really gigafactories, like output, uh, you know, aiming for output, average output of like one and a half to two million units per factory, which is enormous. <laughs> Our Fremont factory in California is, is uh, already the highest output factory in North America. If you add up all the energy produced over the last 10 years by uh, Tesla solar panels, uh, it is more energy than was used to manufacture all of our cars and charge all of our cars at superchargers and at home. We're already recycling uh, at over 50 a week uh, in, um, in Nevada. Now, cars are lasting quite a long time, so there's not that many batteries to actually recycle uh, because you kind of have to typically wait like 12 years or something, like quite a long time before the battery actually uh, is no longer useful. We've also done a lot to simplify the structure of cars to make it easier to manufacture. And one of the things we've done is uh, create the, the largest castings uh, that have ever been done. Um, and they're very complex castings. And so we're able to take uh, 171 pieces of metal and uh, go from 171 pieces to two. Um, and in the process, make it lighter, uh, stiffer, uh, with better ride handling, better noise vibration harshness, uh, better uh, sealing against uh, water. Uh, so it's really better in every way. It, when thinking about the competitiveness of companies, especially if the companies are technology companies, uh, I recommend looking at where the smartest engineers want to work. 
This is, wherever the, the smartest engineers want to work, that technology company is going to be the one that uh, is likely to succeed. Uh, we do allow people to uh, move from one company to the other if they would like. So if you want to spend a better time working on electric vehicles, better time spending working on rockets, you can, that, that's cool. We support that. We had, there's a lot of interest in working at Tesla with three million job applications uh, last year. So a lot of interest in working at Tesla. Uh, <laughs> now, some people may occasionally have encountered a supercharger that didn't work. Um, but in general, uh, the uptime of our superchargers is extremely good. Um, we've also made a lot of progress on uh, safety. So our cars are already the, uh, the safest in the industry. Uh, so we have the lowest probability of injury of any cars ever tested by the, the U.S. government. Um, and uh, we update this in real time. So we, because our cars are, are connected, FSD beta grow uh, very rapidly. Um, and this, this is definitely going to go very exponential in miles uh, driven. So we're now at over 40 million miles. And I suspect by the end of this year, we're well over 100 million miles. Basically, FSD beta will be available to anyone who requests it. Um, by the end of this year. So, so AI Day Part 2, uh, but that's at the end of next month. I'm sort of surprised uh, that you know, people, or at least like analysts out there, are not really understanding the importance of the Optimus robot. Um, my guess is Optimus will be more valuable than the car th than long term. So the next, the next decade, huh, I wonder how many cars we'll have in, in 10 years. Yeah, 10 years ago, we had less than 3,000 cars. Now we've made 3 million. I'd say 100 million is pretty doable. Uh, we've got some uh, questions from the internet that were voted to the top. So I'll answer these questions, and then we'll take just questions from the audience. Uh, so one of the questions is, how does Tesla intend to utilize cash in the, in the coming years? Uh, will we increase CapEx, CapEx uh, well, I guess you can read the question, uh, share buybacks, dividends, or acquisitions? The vast majority of our growth, basically 90% of our growth, has been organic. Um, which I think is actually a really good thing. Um, if, but if we, if we do see interesting companies, uh, we, you know, we will acquire them. But our, it, it's quite rare for us to acquire a company. Um, but we are interested in companies that are very good at manufacturing automation, uh, software, AI, uh, manufacturing technology in general, that kind of thing. Depending on what our future cash flow looks like, uh, I think a sort of share buyback is, is Possible. I wouldn't want to commit to that, but uh, well, you know, let's just make sure uh, you know that there's not some force majeure event somewhere. <laughs> you know, I think we want to make sure we, we have plenty of capital, that, and that future cash flow is looking very solid, uh, and the world is relatively stable. And then I think uh, share buyback is is on the table. So, how many factories are necessary to achieve 20 million vehicles? I think probably roughly a dozen. So, we're, we're aiming for. Uh, one and a half to two million units per factory. Was, uh, Cybertruck pricing, uh, it was unveiled in 2019, and the, <laughs> and, and the reservation was $99. So, you know, things have, a lot has changed since then. The specs and the pricing will be different. I, you know, hate to sort of give a little bit of bad news, but I, I think there's, there's no way to sort of have, have anticipated quite the inflation that we've seen. And the, but what I can say is that the Cybertruck will be one hell of a product. And it's going to be like a damn fine machine. So, yeah. And we're all tracking to be in production um, uh, middle of next year from this factory. So we're, we're going to be installing the production equipment. Starting uh, in the next couple of months, we'll begin the, uh, the installation. So aiming to be in volume production middle of next year. What could possibly go wrong in answering this question? <laughs> um, uh, well, let me just say that, uh, uh, you know, I, I hope for Peace and respect. <laughs> uh, 4680, um, we, we are making a decent number every week. I think we'll be in high volume production by the end of this year. It's, it's always difficult to predict. This is because a lot of new technology. What's the slope of the S curve on ramp? And except that I'm confident we will get to the, uh, you know, the, the high production rate. Uh, but it's probably uh, end of this year before we get confidently to a high production rate. Um, but, but this does not affect our vehicle output. We actually have uh, en enough battery cell supply from suppliers to make one and a half million cars this year. So it's not a constraint on output, uh, it, it, but it, is, it will be important for next year. Okay.
with peak inflation behind us. So the inflation question is, is interesting because we, we do get a fair bit of insight into where prices of things are going over time. Um, because when you're making millions of cars, uh, you have to um, purchase commodities many months in advance. The interesting thing that we're seeing now is that uh, most of our commodities, most of the things that go into a Tesla, not all, but I don't know, more, more than half, the prices are trending down in six months, six months from now. Now, this could change, obviously, but, but the trend is down, which suggests that uh, we are past peak inflation. My guess is that we are past peak inflation. We will have a recession. I think it will be a relatively mild recession for, I don't know, 18 months or something like that. Um, it would be my best guess right now. And, and I, think we, I think inflation is going to drop uh, rapidly. That's my guess. Yeah, the, the Tesla robot essentially changing the economy. Like, how can we base an economy on, on automation? Look at, yeah, look at how many cars are parked. Like, they're just parking lots full of cars everywhere. Uh, because cars need a driver, and so most of the time they're doing nothing. Um, you know, typically a passenger car is going to be like 12 hours a week or something like that of usage. Um, now, if it's autonomous, maybe it can get to 50 or 60 hours of usage. You have the option of, of, of owning a car, using a car just occasionally when you need, want to use their car, or they want to add or subtract it to the fleet. Um, so I think it would end up being some kind of combination of like Airbnb and Uber or something like that. I mean, assuming we get all these things, we do all these things, I think probably Tesla will be the most valuable company in the world. So. Thank you for making the world a better place. I, I, I mean, I'd just like to say thank you for helping make it happen. Without you, without the early adopters of uh, electric vehicles and sort of full self-driving, Tesla would not be where it is today. So thank you for your support. The point of a company is to create useful products and services. If those products and services are great, it's a valuable and useful company, and if they're not, it's, it's not. And so really, to understand a company, you must use its products. And if you think the products are great, then it's, well, the company's great. That's it. That, that, that's how it is. Um, and so I, I think, ironically, a lot of the peop people that, that are sort of professional analysts don't drive Teslas. So I'm like, well, okay, you know, there are a lot of really good and insightful ideas um, uh, on the internet, on Twitter and whatnot, and, um, oh yeah, Twitter. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, so, so I guess sometimes people fret a little bit too much about this quarter or that quarter, but um, you know, if you're a shareholder, a company is really like the net present value of future cash flows. And so what is a, you know, a, a one quarter is not really a big deal. Um, I, I think if you see people panicking, then instead of so you're saying, oh man, my stock's gone down. This is a buying opportunity. <laughs> when would Tesla launch their first pilot city for the Tesla network, the robo-taxi business? It's actually going to be probably um, much more widespread than that because uh, Tesla is, is developing a general solution for self-driving. Um, and it's not really specific to uh, one city or location. Now, there's different regulatory requirements in, in various cities and states. So some locations will uh, offer regulatory approval sooner than others, but, um, but we are aiming for a general solution. <laughs> so um, I'm Gary Black, managing partner of the Future Fund. Tesla is our largest position. Probably the thing we worry about most, it's not, not PR, but it's, um, <laughs> it's succession. So, you know, key man risk is a big thing. How, do, how does the board think about your succession? And especially when you have, you know, a judge is going to decide in a couple months whether or not you have to take over Twitter. How would you split your time? <laughs> well, I think you know, Tesla is definitely gathering a lot of momentum. And we have a very exciting product roadmap uh, that will last a long time. Um, so. Now, obviously, execution against the, that roadmap is, is difficult because these are not simple products. They're not copies of what anyone else is doing. They're new things. Um, so, but I intend to stay with Tesla as long as I can be useful. Um, 
And um, you know, I can be most useful, I think, on the product design and, and manufacturing, so basically factory design, sort of manufacturing optimization. And we, we do have a very talented team here, so I think, uh, I think Tesla you know, would continue to do very well even if uh, I was kidnapped by aliens. <laughs> oh, well, went, went back to my home planet, maybe. <laughs> I, th I think it's, it's a good question, and I, I, to be frank, I don't have a, an easy answer. Uh, open to ideas. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'm definitely working as hard as I can, and, um, and I'm very excited about the future of the company, and, uh, you know, I think it's, it's, got, a, it's got a very bright, very bright future, uh, even without me. Um, so... Uh, I'm, I'm not leaving, so uh, to be clear. Um, yeah, <laughs> so, <laughs> I do use Twitter a lot, so it's not like I would, I'm like randomly going around wanting to acquire companies or something. I'm not like a hedge fund. I'm not a hedge fund or a private equity firm or something. So, um, in fact, the, the only two uh, publicly traded securities I own are Tesla and Twitter. That's it. I, I do understand the product quite well, so. I think I've got a good sense of, of where, to, where to point the engineering team uh, at Twitter to make it radically better. I do sort of have a, well, a, a grander vision for what I thought X.com or X Corporation could have been back in the day. It's, it's a pretty, pretty grand vision. And now obviously that could be started from scratch or but I think Twitter would help accelerate that by three to five years. Um, so it's kind of like something I, I thought would be quite useful. Um, and I think it's something that will be very useful to the world. So. And everyone in this room and out there, um, and the three million people who've, who've bought our cars, uh, and the, the, the millions who've, who've gotten solar, and uh, you know, that's all, that all really helps uh, you know, make the world a better, better place for the future. I'd like to sort of convey a, a message of, of optimism about the future. Um, and like, if we if we work, you know, really hard to accelerate sustainable energy, sustainable transport, uh, the future will be good. You know, it's and and I think just just make sure people know that if we work hard towards a sustainable future, we will achieve it. Um, and and the future was bright. So, all right. Thanks, guys. Thank you.